Hi, today I'm going to do a bit of um, charcoal work. I'm going to uh, paint, uh, draw uh, a holly tree that um, <clears throat> I saw up in a park near where I live. This is the rough sketch. I know it's very hard for you to work out what's what because I sketched other things on top. But that's, that's basically one limb. Then there are some limbs that have been cut, sawn off. Then there's another big limb and another limb and then some smaller ones that have been cut off. It's had a lot of, it's been cut a lot. <laughs> We've obviously sort of trying to cut it back into shape or something, which is a shame because it was a beautiful tree. It's still a beautiful tree. So I did this sketch standing by the tree a few, a week or so ago. And I just thought it was a beautiful colour. The bark was so pale and it has a very sort of twisty, sensuous, uh, feel to it, the shape of the of the limbs and the branches and everything and the, and the trunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm using this gorgeous paper by Fabriano. It's called Roma paper and the colour that I'm using is Michelangelo, basically a very soft cream, ivory cream colour. Let's put that out of the way. So to, to, to prepare the ground I'm going to put um, charcoal the ground all over the paper. I'm using Nitram Fine Art Charcoal. These are the, the Baton YN which are just um, soft round uh, sticks and th the way I'm going to apply it is uh, I'm actually just ma put a mask in, bit of masking tape in each corner neatly. I'm just going to start very softly Working at a diagonal. And I'll just go back and forth. <coughs> keeping it, uh, keeping an even pressure. And keeping the same angle so that the charcoal goes on uh, as uniformly as possible, okay? That said, I could probably put a little bit more pressure on so that more charcoal, you know, fixes to the paper. But I'm trying to avoid any harsh streaks by putting irregular pressure here and irregular pressure there. I'm trying to keep it all <coughs> average for now because I just want a soft grey background that I can use to then start doing my drawing on top. I'm sensing that I'm speeding up and I'm sensing that I'm doing wider and wider and longer and longer strokes as I as I come forward. <laughs> Just try and keep it keep it regular. It's quite a challenge. You tend to want to sort of get it over with, you know, which is I don't know why you've got to rush everything. So I'm slowing down. Just watching that black fill up paper. This paper is very expensive, by the way, for a, a full imperial sheet. That's th I think that's th thirty three inches by twenty, if I'm right. Yeah, I think so. 33 inches by 20, it costs about 12 pounds, 12 British pounds for a sheet of paper. It's lovely though. <laughs> it's well worth it. It's much, it's much nicer than um, some of the pastel papers that people who use charcoal tend to end up using. <clears throat> I buy it in packs of five sheets from Pegasus Art. They're based in Stroud. Uh, they got fantastic customer service. They're a family-run business. They've been going for years, and they've got the best price. Oh God, I'm making some streaks now. 
They've got the best price that I can find in the UK for Roma paper. Right, <clears throat> so I've got black all over that now. So I'm just going to use my fingertips and then key all that in. I'm, I'm going at a diagonal, you know, the, the other way now, so I'm crisscrossing what I've already put on. So back and forth on top of that. I just want this to gain, gain purchase, you know, the charcoal to gain purchase in the paper. By the way, if you tried doing this on any sort of pastel paper, you'd probably end up just rubbing most of it off because this paper, Roma paper, has got a really superb tooth and it, it does hold the paper. Right, I'm going to have to go darker now. This is all very experimental, so you just have to bear with me. So I'm putting a lot more pressure now on this second pass. I did it tentatively the first one on the first pass because I don't want the paper to be so black that I can't see my pencil, uh, my charcoal lines when I start to do the drawing of the tree. But this is just a bit too pale, so I'm going in, I'm going in darker on the second pass. And as you can see, I'm going at it from the other angle now, or the other diagonal. I'm just going the other way now. So hopefully this will start to gradually fill in the tooth on the paper evenly. I just didn't want to start my drawing on bare paper. This is why I'm doing the ground. You can do it straight on and do it however you like. But I just fancied having the paper with a good dose of charcoal already on it. Because I wanted to create I want to create a mood. I want to create an atmosphere with this tree, hopefully, because I'm really into trees at the moment and their meanings and their significance and the sort of, uh, you know, the folklore attached to trees and their special uses and their living beings after all. So, right, that's a lot more... <clears throat> So let's start again. I'm going to go from the other diagonal now with my fingers, so I'm using this way now. Yeah, so that's keying in nicely. quite a bit of the paper showing through, you know, the tooth, if I zoom in, okay, so I'm just going to try um, and do a rotating movement, see if that blends it in a little bit more, as I said, this is a bit experimental tonight, I'm just trying out something, pushing my boundaries, you know, trying out a new medium and See what it does. Can you see that? My fingers are not very black, really, are they? When you think, if you if I was to use vine charcoal or willow charcoal instead of nitrum charcoal, my fingers would probably be black by now. There's a lot less dust with um, nitrum. Right, I'm going to try using a tissue. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's giving me a smudgier effect and it's reducing the sort of dimpled and speckly effect of the tooth, which I want. So that's it. That's giving me a really nice... Yeah, that's better. That's what I was after. Okay. So I needed a bit of tissue then. That was the answer for that. <clears throat> and finally, I'm just going to push that in. 
So now I've done that, I'm ready to start my drawing of my tree. So I'll see you in the next part. Okay, just to explain a bit more about Nitram, fabulous charcoal, I think is probably the best charcoal I've ever used. Um, it comes in different softnesses or hardnesses. Uh, there's B, then there's HB, then there's H, which I'll be using in a sec for my drawing, and then there's the soft round, and they also come in different sizes. You know, you can get big chunks, you know, big rectangular ones, which will cost a bomb. Uh, but these are all this sort of size, you know, and they've got a little sticker on the end so you know what colour, uh, what, what, what one you're using, which is helpful. So for now I'm going to use this, the, the H, the blue one, and what you need is, of course, it's going to be tricky to work with a square edge like that, with the square tip. So I've made a sanding block with a piece of wood, you know, and then some fine glass paper. Um glass very fine sandpaper and now this will make you cry because now I'm going to waste probably you know a, a half of the charcoal by sharpening it to a very fine tapering point and unfortunately that's the way of it it's just a bit of there's just waste <clears throat> so I'm holding it if you can see I'm holding it flat to the sharpening pad and then twisting it around, turning it and I'm trying to, you know, where there's the sort of right right angle, the squared off bit of the charcoal, I'm laying that on the sandpaper and trying to get that down to a rounded shape. And the point of having a, sorry, excuse the pen, the point of having a very sharp uh, tip and tapering tip is so that you can see where you're going. Because if you're trying to draw with a stumpy, blunt edged, uh, a blunt pointed charcoal stick, you're not going to be able to place those marks accurately at all. And so you'll be trying to draw and not seeing where the heck you're going and it's very frustrating. So you have to bite the bullet and waste a ton of charcoal to get a fine point. <laughs> if anybody knows of a better way of doing it, shout. Right, nearly there. But I've got a little trick. Uh, I'm going to show you. Oh, that's not bad. It could be better. It's an art in itself doing this actually. Sharpening this is an art. <laughs> Trying my best. Well, it's not bad. If I stuck that in my eye, that would really hurt. <laughs> but all that, that powder that you can see there, I'm going to tip that into a piece of uh, paper and keep it for later because I could then drop it, sprinkle it on paper and rub it in, you know, and uh, <coughs> I'll just do it now, let's do it now. Right, let's drop some of that dust on there, there we go. And I can make a ground there, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, being economical. <laughs> Actually, using it, you can use it to darken a piece of paper. So I've got my lovely sharp point now. Yeah, it's very sharp. Okay, so a, a good thing to have to hand as well if you don't want charcoal all over your fingers is one of these microfiber microfiber cloths that you can buy everywhere now that pick up do it. They've got like a anti-static-y type thing about them. Anyway, so um wipe my hands on that. Okay, so my drawing is there. I'm just going to go
these are the stumps that were cut off base different thicknesses of um, parts of the trunk are actually cut off, cut off. Down like there. Where the, where the trunk, this trunk is overlapping this narrow branch, I'm doing a thicker line. And same here, where the base of that is overlapping the, the, the trunk that's behind, I'm using a thicker, scratchier line you know, to push the overlap. And there's a truncated part of a, a limb there, and then the base of this main, the main trunk. So I'm making that really dark so that that pushes this finer tapering one behind. Okay. Right, now I need to stop and go and get my reference photos and look at shading on that. So back in the next clip. Right, so here are my photographs. Some of them are not very good. That's a bit overexposed, but you can see the beauty of the sort of, uh, it's like a golden pale yellow colour, uh, or pale, or a white colour, I can't describe it, it's just beautiful. And then here it is taken in shade with all of the, lots more branches have been lopped off very unceremoniously. Um, and then this is, a, this is a lovely one, it just shows the lovely fissures, but they're soft fissures and grooves, it's almost like... A human body, you know, the like an elbow or you know a, a knee. I just found it really, really, really gorgeous. Um, so in this photograph, uh, and this one shows it uh, up against some darker trees. In this photograph, the light is coming from the right hand side, as we can see from that stump there. There's a cast shadow to the left of it. This part of the trunk is darker. And where there are fissures and gullies and grooves, there are shadows there. There's a shadow there. There's a highlight on the right-hand side, shadow on the left. And so on it goes. So I think I'm going to use this photograph as my basis for the shadow work. So I'm just going to see how that goes, get some shadows in first. So for the shadows, I'm going to use... Um, five, um, eh, um, a B. I've got one really tiny, there's hardly anything left of it. So I'm going to put some, start shading in now. Put that as a cast shadow from that stump there. Yeah. With the charcoal, I'm trying to keep my my uh, strokes, you know, in the same angle. So it's really dark down there at the base of the tree, I'd say. And I'm conscious as I'm drawing this that I'm I've decided I'm going to keep the shadow about one third of the tree, and the other two thirds of the tree will be in light. So so that's my plan. But I don't want it to be a solid third all the way up. I'll have thinner applications in places and then thicker in other places as I'm doing now. I'm going for a thicker passage of charcoal there. 
and then wider as it gets near the top because the trees sort of go into darkness as they go up into the foliage uh, into the treetops so I'm going to darken most of that even even branching over into the what would be the sunlit side because it would be casting it would be getting some darkness up there <laughs> right so this one there'd definitely be um <clears throat> just a light on there so there'd be some cat there'd be a cast shadow on this smaller one from this big tree so i'm just getting a bit of a sh shadow in there then down in amongst these little <clears throat> Sorry if I was in the way then, I think I might have been in the way. And these tr trunks uh, that have been kept, uh, they'll be darker. And there's maybe a bit of a little bit of a dark bit near the, the cut off top of them. So again, trying to keep my strokes diagonal. I think it looks more attractive if you do that. Right, where the tree is curving in there, I'll make the, sh the shadow come out fatter and then as it bends back the other way I'll narrow it and then it's straightening up a bit here so I'll just make it a bit wider on, on this part. And again, darker in general, so it meets the big trunk, the main trunk. Then there's a bit of a cast shadow from a cut off bit there. Right, so starting to fill these in now. Right, let's have a bit more uh, shadow. There's a stump, there's a, a limb has been cut from there, so have a bit of a cast shadow from that as well. Right, this one, this is the narrowest of the three. So again, I want that dark in there so that it shows up against the big trunk in the middle. Okay. So it's casting a shadow there. Right. <coughs> So we've got some extra colour, uh, you know, some tone on now. So what I'm going to do is, with my finger, just blend this in. I'm sort of pressing it, rubbing it down, and then rubbing it down this way, and then flicking it that way. So I'm really pushing the charcoal into the paper. Start at the base there. Let's come in nice and softly. Actually, I need to do some more. Darken this off. There. Oops. I need to do it diagonally. So I'm put that. Diagonally. And then rub that in. You can use. You know, tortillon, the French for paper stump. Okay, they're just bits of paper that have been rolled, and you can use these to blend. If I just zoom in on a part that I want to blend, uh, let's go in here. Okay, let's say I want to blend this in a bit more, so you just rub it across. And it gives another layer of blending. 
and it pushes the charcoal up even more thoroughly and more compactly, if that's a word, into the paper. So it gets rid of even more of the ridges that might still be in evidence. <coughs> Let me go down. See here, there's those striations. If you watch now with the tortillon, see those get diminished. Is that showing up? Yeah. Okay, so that is really fine, finer and finer blending in there. Okay, so let's go right down. Oh, I need to zoom out into the stump. Blend those in. Let's do a bit more blending here with the tortillon. So I'm using this sort of V, the soft V, that soft smudgy bit there. I'm, I'm holding it flat to the paper practically and then smudging up from the dark into the light of the tree so that the blend you know causes the a curve to appear on the tree hopefully it starts looking like it's curving and that it's a cylinder that the tree is a cylinder zoom back out let's blend that in more. Okay. So all this soft work, I'm trying to make that more into shape there, and make it more of a you know a limb, give it more length there. And then start some darker things. Just going to start punishing the darks more strongly in places now. On this main trunk. And getting some of the... Uh, these striations within it because there were some grooves in, in the tree if you remember from the photograph so I'll start putting these grooves in now and tapering it off there so I've put a groove in there now so again let's use this tortillon to just Diagonally smudge that in towards the right hand part of the where the groove is coming out. And that's giving it another ridge and then I'm going to blend it out the other way. Putting the charcoal on and then blending it with the tortillon. That ends a bit abruptly, so I'll just soften it off there. Let's see if I can just get a little bit of uh, a 
groove in this uh, smaller limb. Just going back to go really dark in there now. Soften these off. So dragging on one side of that dark passage to soften it in, and the same there. That's giving it a little bit more texture, but again, it abrupt land it ends too abruptly, so I want to blend that in. Okay, so that's how it's looking at the moment. What I'd like to do now is uh, really darken off the base. You've got to sacrifice something, so this has to go much darker now to really start having some contrast in, in the tree. Because overall, it's a little bit too samey, so I'm going to really sacrifice a lot of the base of the main tree here and have it very, very dark. But I'm having a jagged base at the bottom where you know there'd be some grasses and things growing or whatever. So it's not a solid block at the base. So it's practically all dark there. And then this one similarly I'm gonna push the dark in there. Maybe there might even be a passage of dark going across there. That being a sort of cast shadow from a branch higher up in the tree that we can't see, but is nevertheless there. Okay. Right, and then finally push a little bit here as well. Just to spread out that. to use the tortillon just to blend that in very lightly. going to stop there. I just uh, enjoyed doing that as an exercise. Um, maybe I could have added a few more limbs here and there but just to get the hang of um, charcoal I think I really enjoyed <coughs> doing that practice. Okay so thanks for watching.